Hello, welcome to Afternoon Club. We're back to full strength now after the snooker tournament. And, uh, just... yes, I, I saw it. And congratulations to Steve Davis. He's done it again. Well, he would, wouldn't he? Yes, he's a talented boy. And so is the artist that you've brought along from the world of theatre for us to meet today. Yes, well, I wonder if you're going to recognise him. He's playing Mr Hardcastle in the National Theatre's production of She Stoops to Conquer at the Marlowe Theatre in Canterbury. It is, of course, Tom Baker, known to us all as the Time Lord in Doctor Who. Welcome, Tom. Thank Are you, you pleased to be back with the National Theatre? Yes, I'm pleased to be in a, in a good play and playing a good part. Because it is a good play, isn't it's it? It's a marvellous play, and uh, one goes where the work is. I mean, I have old memories of the National Theatre. I was there when Lawrence Olivia <gasps> was running it in the 60s. Mm. But it is interesting to be back, and it's interesting to be on the road with a good play, because, I mean, you know, we're chasing audiences outside of London as well as mm -hmm. the, on the South Bank. Yes, I'm enjoying it a lot. And it's doing well. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> Dora Bryan, oh, who as, is, Mrs. as Mrs. Hardcastle, my wife. Uh, um, Howell Bennett plays the lover. Um, uh, Kelly Hunter plays Miss Neville, and uh, Julia Watson plays the girl. Tony Haygarth plays uh, Tony Lumpkin, very mm. brilliantly. And is Dora Bryan delightful? Dora Bryan is amazing, yes, absolutely amazing. I'm so pleased. But it's a she... great part for her, and yes. she sees it. I mean, she knows how to phrase that. You see, the language of Goldsmith is not like the language, say, of Farquhar and uh, Congreve, late 17th, early 18th century, <coughs> or the language of uh, Sheridan in the late 18th century. It's this very sweet, uh, mm. rural, domestic thing, which is, now, rooted, yes, and is rooted in the characters. And, then and didn't it happen to Oliver Goldsmith? The, 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 the incident. This actually happened yes to him. it did happen yes he was often making terrible mistakes yes yeah it actually the incident actually happened in embryo to him walking into the wrong house but everything happened to poor goldsmith i mean he was a, oh. he actually poisoned himself by accident you know trying to save money he prescribed his own medicine at the end of his life and killed himself quite by accident apparently he was furious but he, it was too late yes and this was only two days after the success of a bit, bit longer than that very near mm. very near it wasn't quite two days but it was very close two, uh, two years I mean. two years yes. Yes. Mm. And so just when he got his hands on a real bundle, he went and poisoned himself. He was Irish. Not that that makes any difference. <laughs> I don't know. But... Have you seen she stoops to come? I would love to. It sounds riveting. It sounds fabulous. But I want to change tack for just a moment because mm. many viewers seeing you now will remember you, of course, with much longer hair as yes. Doctor Who. Mm. Was that a satisfying phase in your career? Well, yes, I think that uh, when one is in an enormous success, it's always satisfying. I mean, even a line that most actors tell lies on television. I mean, what do you mean? Oh, most of them are terrible liars, aren't when? they? I mean, why? Oh, well, why when? Uh, when? All the time, actors are terrible liars. I mean, I don't think they tell as many lies as, as television producers or academics <laughs> or dentists, but they're generally notorious liars because they want to please everybody. But yes, it was a marvelous phase of my life because it was successful and I was. I had this sort of uh, cover. I was another character. I wasn't Tom Baker. And so it was very gratifying to uh, have marvelous instant intimacy with small children and uh, not have anyone frightened of me. It was a marvelous time, yes. How long did you play the character? Well, I think more than five years I was involved in it. I did 178 episodes, which is now, of course, all around the world. I'm a huge star in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> Do they have television sets? Uh, yes, they do. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. also, in America, you're in demand for personal appearances, aren't you? Oh, yes. Well, or also ooh, sort of healing the sick and things like that and making the unhappy more unhappy. Yes, they think I'm very complex in America. <laughs> but um, it's in 54 countries now. But it doesn't make any difference because no one knows me now since I've had my hair cut. The whole thing hangs, <laughs> you see, on me, on two things, having long hair and a hyperthyroid condition. <laughs> so now my hair's gone. Uh, I'm anonymous. Did you not worry? I mean, your voice is so distinctive. I mean, did you not worry at any time? I mean, being so stereotyped as, as Doctor Who to go and to do a, a part like you're doing now, which obviously you're, you're relishing. Well, I think I was af not afraid. I can't say I was afraid, but I knew the risk in television. I'm certainly typecast in television. Nobody wants to employ me in television in drama at all, apart from Sherlock Holmes. Oh, I was yeah. say, just... uh, that's the only thing. I've been away four years now. And they're very cautious in television, producers and directors. So I think probably I'm knocked out of television. But curiously, in the theatre, there's no caution whatsoever. I get offered a lot of theatre work. And you've done films, though, And Tom, I've done some you? films as well, yes. But, I mean, uh, I think I've knocked off the television because people think I would have no credibility uh, 
if I was playing, you know, an ordinary policeman, well, of course I'd have no credibility. I can't play ordinary policeman or rent debt you collector. Could? No, I can't do that. They don't interest me. I'm not interested in those sort of people. You are in a, in a very good position, really, in the sense that you can turn down parts and, 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 and then really pick and choose what you want to do. Yes, I, well, pick and choose a bit in the theatre. And then to be in the national, um, where you know the standard is going to be high and where you have... everything is going to be good. I mean, not just the actors. The actors, of course, will be very accomplished, but the designers will be marvellous. The administration will be very efficient. There's a big backup. The clothes are simply gorgeous. I mean, people will come and see our play. Perhaps there'll be some people who won't like it. Perhaps they will, but they'll certainly like the way it's done. And what's so interesting, too, your fans from Doctor Who will have got older, a little bit older now, and would enjoy She Stoops to Conquer. Sure. Think very yes, much. I think the fans are quite loyal, yes. In Wolverhampton last week, a lot of the fans turned up to see me, and I think uh, were quite amused to oh. see me looking bald-headed and... <laughs> oh, that's for your wig, isn't it? That's you, right. I had my hair cut because they couldn't get my wig on. I've got a bald wig and they couldn't get it on, so they chopped my hair you off. You were saying you have to get it cut, in fact, to uh, get mm, a little bit shorter. That's right. Uh, now, this, all this career, of course, is very different from when you were 16 years old, when I understand that you were in a monastery for five years. You were studying to be a monk, is that right? Yes, that's right, yes. But, I mean, I've done lots of things when I've been out of work. I mean, that was just sort of filling in. It just ran a long time. That was the longest player I've ever been in, yes. <laughs> But, um, well, five years is a long time to be in a monastery, then to come out. Five years is a long time to be anywhere, really. Um, five years would be a long time to be in Gillingham, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, we like Gillingham, too. We are. I, I spent three years here one afternoon waiting for a train. <laughs> but it's, uh, five years was a long time, yes. But, I mean, I was on my way. You know, I, do, I really believe in accidents. You know, that people take very circuitous routes to their happiness or to their misery or yeah. to find a place they want to be or the person they want to be with or the career they want to find. I mean, I was, I was only being diverted because during the war, you see, it was just, I come from the generation, it was such, I had such a wonderfully privileged childhood um, in that I was born during the war and so the fun of being in Liverpool was being bombed by the Germans made life such a lark. I've always oh. been fond of the Germans for bombing me in Liverpool because they you know, one couldn't go to school, and therefore I obviously haven't been tainted by education or anything like that. <laughs> and I think that helped to sort of point me in the way of... Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, most of the time I spent uh, going to funerals. That was my great preoccupation as a child. In the days before penicillin, I went to lots of funerals. <laughs> and therefore, with the bombs and the funerals and the diphtheria, and people dying of septicemia because they had a nail in their shoe, life was much more interesting then. It was more dramatic because uh, one wasn't sure that one would get through to Friday. The certainty now that most people will live at least to Friday, I think, makes life slightly tedious for most people. Now, what you're doing now is educating people as you go with your uh, She Stoops to Conquer, because I understand that you are doing lunchtime performances w whenever you can to kind of, like, get people in the mood for what they're about to see and, and bring people into the... or take them back into what life might have been like. Yes, I think, I think that when you work at the National Theatre, we're not about actually hitting... Canterbury and showing off that we're clever actors or clever designers and then going off to Plymouth we actually do try during that we'd get completely involved in Canterbury and the actors put on what are called platform productions there's one fellow who's dedicated uh, authority of Edgar Allan Poe he does a marvelous 15-minute one-man show all about Poe he does it very well indeed that's Tony Haygarth and about 15 of the other people are in a whole 18th century platform presentation of uh, Goldsmith and his life and times, and Dr. Johnson and Bennett Langton and uh, Joshua Reynolds and all that crowd. And, they, that all, and that, of course, is in a very inexpensive. People just pay a few pennies to go in and see that. Well, is this something that they do in London, too? Yes, they do. It's a I very mean, we, good idea, isn't We it? go into London on the, uh, the 3rd. We, have, we preview on the 3rd and open on the 8th of November. But, I mean, every evening, or most evenings, the audience can come in for 60p or something like that, can see these platform productions, so the whole evening can be really very good. I've not heard of anything like this before. Is this a new concept? In, in well, it's, it's... The young Vic used to do it. The young Vic bit, used to do it. I think more and more people, actors are willing, and writers want, and directors want the actors to get involved with the audience. Mm. Not to completely demystify acting, although that's not necessarily a bad thing, but to actually share the whole thing. Mm. Sure, ideally, you'd like, I, say, I guess, the audience to actually dress up in costume as well and, and really be part of the whole thing. Well, yes, I mean, that would be fun to do. I mean, certain productions. I mean, the coming production of Coriolanus at the National Theatre, directed by Peter Hall, well, obviously, it's impossible to actually get the Roman mobs 
you can't actually hire 400 people. But yeah. what you can do if you're a clever director is get 400 people out of the audience onto the stage. We're going to be back and uh, chat some more, but we do have to break for the news now. We're going to go to South... Hello. Um, this afternoon, David and I have been talking to Tom Baker, who's been telling us all about his part as Mr. Hardcastle, and she stoops to concrete, scribbling away now, because in Maidstone, uh, uh, telephone switchboards have been jammed with phone calls demanding your signature for their children, and <laughs> Tom is doing that now, and he'll send them off after this program. Is that right? And if people can't get to Canterbury, you'll be doing previews at the National Theatre on right. the South Bank. On the 3rd of November, and we open on the 8th. And everyone is welcome to mm. so the National Theatre, of course. Or... What's the National Theatre all about? <coughs> the National Theatre, it is not widely appreciated. It's just about excitement and fun. And it's not appreciated, of course, that it just belongs to everyone. But it's just about excitement. And it's much more accessible. People have these daft notions that it's hard. It's excitement. Not. That's the name of the game. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> yes, it's been great having you on the programme.